What's going on guys? Welcome back and thanks for joining us. Today we have Will. He's a conflict analyst for a law firm. So let's sit down with him and see what he's got for us. Hey, what's going on guys? Please join me in welcoming Will here. Will, how you doing? I'm good, Trey. Thanks for having me. Of course. Um, so I kind of want to start by talking about your background, where you're from, uh, where did you go to school, where did you grow up, things like that. Why sure. don't you just uh, go over that and we'll go from there. Sure. Uh, my family and I have been living in New Jersey for my whole life, essentially. Um, I went to school, I went to elementary school in New Jersey, okay. but I went to high school in Philadelphia, Okay. as well as college. Where did you go to college? Drexel University. Okay, so what did you study there? I I declare my original major as accounting. Okay. I did that for two years, um, and then I transitioned this into psychology, which didn't last very long because I discovered that you would have to go to school, get your <laughs> master's, and potentially a, a PhD in order to have any sort of, in order for that degree to have any sort of usefulness. Okay. Um, cool. So. What are you doing these days now? Well, to, as of today, I'm working as a conflict analyst at a law firm in Center City, Philadelphia. Conflict analyst. So, that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so, why don't you kind of, I kind of want to talk about what you have, what did you have to go through to get into this? Sure. And then I want to kind of talk about what do you do as this, uh, as an analyst, conflict analyst. So, did you have to get any certification or anything like that for this? Or, or no, you, no. When I, at Drexel, Drexel has their co-op program. Right. So back in 2016, I completed my first or my second co-op with this law firm. Okay. In a completely unrelated position. Um, and after your co-op, you go back to school for six months. Okay. While you look for your next co-op. So I went back to school and I looked for my final internship, which brought me back to this law firm in another position, which was that dealt which dealt more with um, recruiting. I completed that six month internship, went back to school to complete my final year. Okay. And during that process, I was looking for jobs because I was going to be done school. Right, right. Um, I eventually came back to the law firm in a data in a data entry position. Okay. Which got my foot back in with the current law firm. Um, I spent about three months in that position until I applied for my current position with the conflicts department. So you're so when you first, so you're working at the same place as you started your career in. Is that correct, or is it two different law firms? It's the same law firm. Same okay, law firm. okay, it's all right. I, it's the same law firm, but I've had the privilege of working in different departments to give me a different glimpse on how the firm mm -hmm. operates. Got you. So let's talk about what this job is, what is like the description of sure. the job? So generally speaking, my responsibilities involve assisting partners with bringing on new clients. Okay. I do this by ensuring that there are no uh, legal conflicts with any of our existing clients. Okay. So for example, if you decide to bring on ABC company, okay. my job is to make sure that you're not uh, in any legal any legal battles with any of our existing clients. Okay. If you, let's say that you were in a lawsuit with one of our existing clients, my job would be to be obtain, obtaining legal documentation to clear that conflict. You, you would have to say, I have no problem with uh, your current rep my current representation of the existing client. Um, okay, so just to kind of like put it in dumbed down version sure. and kind of like using say Walmart as a reference, right? Walmart, I'm a lawyer. I want to work for your company, sure. your firm, right? And my client is Walmart. Sure. So if I were to want to bring, come on, is and you're kind of looking, make sure my background with all Walmart doesn't conflict with any of your existing clients, right. is that correct? Yes. Okay, that's what kind of what I wanted to make sure. sure. And then if there were a conflict, basically, uh, my job would, would to be to facilitate a conversation between you and then whoever, let's say you're conflicted with Walgreens. Let's okay. Say. My job would to be obtaining 
legal documentation from Walmart mm-hmm. and Walgreens stating that they, you both do not have any issues with us working in the same company. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so then, all right. This kind of is interesting because what happened... What happens if you if I do have an issue and like how can you leverage two companies if they don't have issue? It's a great question. So <laughs> if if we're able, the standard procedure for our firm is to have you sign a contract letter or an engagement letter. Okay. In which states that you will prospectively waive all conflicts. So basically, I I would only have to ask you one time to waive a conflict. Okay. And in the future, I wouldn't have to ask you. I would only have to notify you. But as a clientele, me, let's just say now I'm Walmart, right? And my lawyer works for the same company that I am suing Walgreens for. I would feel some type of way, right? Like why? Like, so aren't you like internally, isn't that like a conflict by itself? Because you guys are both working for the same company? There are instances where we just can't take on representations because if there's a situation like you just mentioned, it's, mm-hmm. it, it's a conflict of interest. You just conflict yourself out of potential work because it's one side doesn't want to waive or if there's a, a litigation going on. But I'm talking about like if both parties agree, let's say that Walmart agrees, that's fine. You can be, you know, it's fine with us. Walgreens says it's fine with us, but they're in a legal battle, right? Sure but both of the lawyers are working for your firm, correct? Isn't that a conflict of interest within the lawyers sure, themselves so because they might be like friends or sure, something? Sure, sometimes, some, sometimes we'll have to set up an ethical wall. Basically, um, there will be a short list of attorneys who can't access Walgreens matters or oh. Walmart matters. Gotcha. Um, it's, it's very intricate. Usually, sometimes they won't even, <laughs> like you'll have to, as an analyst, you'll have to think, okay, like you said, there, these two attorneys could have some prior business dealings where they could interact, maybe we'll have to set up some kind of ethical wall so that the information can stay. Who we'll creates that? Is that you who um, creates it or is somebody? I, well, I sent an email to the firm counsel who does it on her. The firm counsel is kind of like the corporate watchdog, so to speak. Understood. Who's, uh, sh- this person's responsibility is to ensure that the partners are all complying with the best business practices so we don't get sued. Got you. Now, I'm kind of backtrack just a tad bit. In terms of like what you do, did you need to know things or like did you get trained on the job? How does that work? Because it seems like a pretty niche, complicated sure. situation. A lot of it was, a lot of my knowledge was obtained via training, okay. especially the database that we utilize to run our conflict searches. Okay. Um, my law firm is a very, it's, a glo- it's on a global scale. Okay. As such, there are a lot of clients. Right. Um, so we have a database that required some training. Um, how to uh, enter search terms to kind of make the searches as thorough as possible. Gotcha. Um, but one thing that you can't really train in per se is the relationships you have, your interpersonal relationships with your attorneys for whom you work. Okay. Um, other than that, a lot of it is technical. It's very, it's easy to train someone how to use a database um, but I mean I'm assuming it's not just like using the database to pull information you have to do a lot of critical thinking sure and right? you have to analyze you, uh, a lot of it I mean it is it's a very uh, user-friendly database okay but to your point you have to analyze you have to first of all you have to siphon through all the search results depending on what you're searching there could be a lot um, of hits that you have to bring over and eventually clear. Mm. But there are some instances where you, you'll get a hundred parties that you have to clear and there could be what? there could be like t- half a dozen a dozen hits for each party. So you could spend a lot of time. What is the starting salary for a person in your position? In the Philadelphia area it's about 50. Okay, got you. And then so going forward like what kind of uh, you know, promotions can you get? Like I'm in a starting position. Okay. I know there's a senior analyst Okay. It's a, it's, a, it's a pay bump, and it's also a little more responsibility. With and then there's a manager position. Okay. So what do you what do you like the most about your job? I think it would have to be dealing with a variety of personalities with respect to the partnership. Okay. Because you have a lot of partners who are old school, by the book, and they it's their way or the highway. Okay. And you kind of you need to you need to learn how to navigate that kind of personality. And other times you have partners who are very 
uh, easygoing and understanding and um, willing to do whatever is necessary to help you do your job, which right. is nice. Um, so just that balance of um, understanding your audience, who you're dealing with on a given day, gotcha. and how you can um, get what you need to right, do your right. job. So yeah. what do you, th on the flip side of it, what, what is your, what do you not like about your job? This comes more on a, on a personal level. It's not so much related to the job, okay. per se. But it's just unreasonable partners. Perhaps you have a partner who doesn't understand your our process okay. and what we need. And so you really have to hash out the details. There are situations where I'll literally bullet point my emails. Gotcha. Were there any surprising things in this in your position that you really didn't really think of before? The yeah. amount of layers <laughs> for each the amount of steps for each request that comes in. Okay. It's definitely, you definitely need to take your time, obviously, but th we have resources that ki that we can fall back on if uh, it's uh, like a reminder sheet. Like the, if you, if you think you're missing something, you can always consult that document to make sure you're covering all of your bases. But there's definitely, if you're if you're looking at this position as something that you're interested in, um, you definitely have to keep in mind that this is a law firm. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of liability to go around if things go south. Mm -hmm. So it all it all starts with our department. When the work comes in, we're processing this. We're making sure that there are no issues to mm -hmm. be addressed, um, and that's something that you have to take account of because if you miss something, it's it's not only bad for you on a personal level, but for the firm, it right. could get them in a lot of trouble. I mean, I'm glad you kind of mentioned that. Like, so, what would you, what would your advice be for someone who's looking into this? Like, what kind of work do they would they want to do or look forward to do? Well, number one, you have to be attentive, attention to detail. Okay. So my department has a lot of resources that can kind of um, funnel that information for you. Okay. But you have to, you have to, yeah, be able to you have to yeah. compartmentalize yeah. all of those different details that. You might not deal with every day right. because this matter is uh, atypical of what you may right. handle on a day to day. Got you. Got you. So okay. Well, I know you are. Uh, you know, you do a little bit of music on the side, right? On the side, yeah. So I kind of want to talk about that a little bit. Like, sure. what what kind of started that? Uh, this I can talk about. <laughs> um, I it was tw twenty eighteen. Okay. Finishing up school. Okay. And kind of tying in with this theme of this conversation, I I didn't. I was I was lacking purpose. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Okay. I had this job, my current job, lined up, but it was it was something that I just viewed as a stepping stone to something else. Okay. Um, so my but my childhood friend and I took a spontaneous road trip to Wildwood Beach. Okay. And we were just hanging out on the beach. Uh, and I don't know. All these ideas just came to my mind because I had been playing the guitar for three years at that point. I, I wrote my first song in 2018 after okay. that road trip. Um, I don't remember what spot. I just started recording. Okay. I just I just said let me just post something. I had I had this Instagram account that I hardly used. Uh -huh. so I said you know what let me just put some use to it. It's it's just sitting here no posts collecting right. dust. So I just started <laughs> posting, and then I started writing, and then I eventually I started recording because these these ideas that I had just wanted to come out. Right, right. So I just started recording music. It's great, man. Yeah, and I've been releasing stuff uh, ever since. Nice. Know, How many songs have you released so far? I, I, so this past March, I released my third song, and I actually have a new song coming out. Okay. End of this month. Great. So well, we'll be looking forward to that. So I do want to have you plug in before I like let you go, because sure. I, I think I, we had covered enough. I want you to plug in your you know, uh, music stuff. Uh, for our audiences so they can check you out. If you don't mind, just go for sure. it. Sure. Uh, I'm on Instagram as B Dang Music, just the letter B and then Dang Music. Uh, I'm also on YouTube as Billy Dang and Spotify, Billy Dang. Okay, perfect. Any uh, Anywhere else? Uh, I'm on TikTok at B Dang Music as well. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. I will be posting all that link on the description, so please look forward to that. Again, Will, thank you so much for your time. Sure. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Jay. If you are interested in a specific career path or know someone who'd like to be interviewed, please email us at askalutely uh, at gmail.com. That's basically absolutely without the BS. <laughs>